Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, What You Learn After a Breakup. What You Learn After a Breakup. It's interesting how sometimes we don't want to listen to our friends when they speak truth to us. You know, the kind of truth that just knocks the wind out of you. The kind of truth that makes you not like your friend very much. The kind of truth that makes you a little bit disappointed and you don't want to talk to somebody for a long time. But some will see the light after the breakup. They may be in the process of breaking up right now mentally and then eventually their feet follow. But the light bulb will be clicked on after the relationship comes to an end. You see, a lot of times when one is in a relationship, he or she cannot see, cannot see the truth. That person looks around and sees that they are quite busy, busy with this project, busy with this person, doing this and doing that for other people. They may see that the children need them for any number of things. And meanwhile, the partner who is speaking to them who wants some attention, who wants some affection, well, I have no time. I'm inundated with responsibilities. I got bills to pay. I got this. I got that. Isn't it interesting when one is in a relationship, they have all of this stuff going on. They're very busy. They're moody. They show their true colors. And you know the rest, those of you all who have been in relationships and who are now free. But then, once... Once the red flag shows up, not the white one, the white one is of peace. But when the red flag warning sign shows up that this person is walking out the door, there is either an attempt made to try to keep that person there or there is no attempt and one walks away freely. Now the relationship has come to an end and that one who claimed to be very busy and I don't have time for the drama or I've got this thing to do and that thing to do and oh the children and the bills and all of that. Suddenly they are clearing their schedule so that they can go on the internet and meet someone. Suddenly they are making some time to go out on a date. Suddenly the individual has interests. Oh, now he or she is willing to go here and do this and do that. And this is why some people, not all, some people after a breakup kind of lose it a little bit. They start to show a crazy side, a crazy side that maybe you have never seen before. So you have time now. You have time to go out. You have time to talk to this one and that one. Oh, you're not so busy now. Oh, you even have an interest for sex, but you didn't have that interest when we were together. I know I am stepping on someone's toes, but the Lord moved me to speak this kind of speech because some people... Well, they don't want to listen to their friends. And sometimes their friends just aren't going to talk to them quite boldly like this and say, well, you know, your relationship could have worked if you would have just simply made time. I'm sure that she or he came to you at some point and said, maybe in a quiet voice or maybe with tears in their eyes or even screaming, we need to work on this relationship. We need to do some things differently. We need to stop being foes and be friends. We need to spend some more time with one another. We need to go here and go there. And of course, all that conversation fell on deaf ears. But now, now that one is by his or herself, the same things that a partner was screaming or crying or even talking politely about maybe days, weeks, months, or even years ago. Now the light bulb clicks on. Now I'm going to spiritualize this message a little bit and tell some of you all that when God is speaking to you in that gentle voice, that kind voice, when these blessings are coming and things are quite nice, and then you get a little bit complacent and so forth. And then he turns up the heat a little bit to remind you that he has given you this and given you that. And he wants what's best for you. 
and you decide to ignore him. Oh, it started one day not reading the Bible. Another day, I'm not going to church. And then another day, I'm not going to listen to praise music. I prefer to worldly music. And no, I'm not going to look at any type of Christian entertainment because, well, I prefer the shooting up and the killing and the whatever else that goes on in some of these movies. And you gradually distance your relationship with the Lord. And then when the relationship breakup takes place now suddenly I got time for the Lord I want to read the Bible I want to go to church I want to do what's right I've experienced so many losses I mean I don't have my husband or my wife here any longer or you know I really could have been a better man or a better woman but I guess you know now that God is in my life Jesus help us mm, mm, mm. Sometimes we got to go through a wilderness experience in order to get to that place where we serve the Lord. See, the Lord wanted some people to serve him while they were in those relationships. And if you think back, there were times where there was someone, maybe that friend who was telling you, why don't you come to church with me? Why don't you get back to reading your Bible? Why don't you stop talking to some of them relatives? You know that they're not, <laughs> they're just causing problems for you and your wife or you and your husband. Why don't you stop, you know, listening to some of these folks? You know, she ain't got no man. Your sister, your brother uh, doesn't have a woman. You know, and they're miserable. Yeah, some of your friends. I mean, all of these things, these were warning signs in these relationships, you see. And then when the person starts to lose it a little bit because they're tired of chasing after you, they're tired of talking to you, they're tired of bringing up all of these issues. They eventually leave and their attention is placed on someone else, someone else who they make time for because, well, that last one didn't make time. That last one ignored all of the writing on the wall. That last one didn't see the beauty in me or the creativity in me or the spirituality in me or my interests. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. And so there was a lack of appreciation. But then along comes Jim or Bob or Tina or or, uh, you know, Teresa or whoever. And they show up and they're giving that person the time that that other one didn't. And then crazy starts showing up with some people. Because now I want you back. Look, I can work on this. Come on, just give me a chance. Oh, so now that somebody else is taking up interest in me, now you have time for me. And you know, most people, they don't go back to the foolishness. Now, somebody who uh, still has feelings, still cares, someone who's under some kind of uh, mental abuse, okay, uh, physical abuse or what have you, they tend to go back. They can go back as many as seven times, according to experts, seven times back to that person. OK, back to the person who just didn't show enough love, enough care, enough appreciation, enough whatever, only to be used and abused again. Because a lot of times, depending on how old these people are, they never learn. They never learn. They didn't learn back when they was with Janie. They didn't learn when they was with Bob. They didn't learn when they was with uh, Sarah. They didn't learn when they was with uh, Nisi. They was, you know, they didn't learn when they was with, uh, you know. John, they just never learned. And so they make the same mistakes over and over and over and over again. Your friends, whether your friends have been around for a long time or not, sometimes they will speak the kind of truth to get you to see where you are in error, whether you are in error with someone, without someone, whether you're spiritual or unspiritual. And when we ignore them, we are also ignoring the one true God that's using them to speak a word of truth into our lives. You see, some of you are you are blessed with friends. You are blessed with people who sincerely care about you, who will go to the ends of the earth for you. But sometimes people will take advantage of their friends too. They will look at their kindness as weakness. And then eventually God will move upon those friends and say, you can find friends somewhere else. You see, sometimes we do this sort of thing not so much in relationships, but with our friends. You see, 
your friend is reaching out to you and wants you to connect with him or her, but you say, I don't have any time. I got, you know, all these responsibilities. I'm busy. You know, I got this to do and that to do. And so eventually your friend stops inviting you to certain events. Your friend stops giving you your friend stops acknowledging certain holidays. Your friend stops coming around because, well, you see, you have communicated over and over again that you have no time. And then sometimes it's not about time, but you're running away from the truth that a friend speaks. I don't want to hear what she has to say because I know how she is. I don't want to hear him because I know he's going to start talking about how I deserve better. And then I think he secretly likes me anyway. And those kind of friends, well, they're not going to be very good friends because they're after what? One thing. And that's you. <laughs> that's you. And I learned a long time ago, those kind of male friends, you can't have them because they want you. And when you go and you speak to them about what that other man is doing or what he's not doing or all of that, they start using that information, building up a case to help them. OK, so that's why it's not good to have those kind of friends, especially if you once was intimate with them in your life. I've said this before and I'm going to say it again because some people are weak. They even fantasize about the exes. They even think about the ones that got away. They even will have these images in their head while they're supposed to be making love to their wives or to, you know, their husbands. They got these images in their head of that one. And that, of course, is going to affect your relationship because that's emotional cheating, whether that person is in your life or long is out of your life or isn't even paying attention to you. You are moving away from your partner. And into the arms of someone else. And then you got some of these friends who they're thinking all sorts of things that they shouldn't be thinking. Because if she's looking at you as a friend and only a friend, that's what you should be. Not giving her all these compliments and talking about if only you were my woman. And, you know, I could do this for you and I can do that for you, you see. And we have these individuals. We know them. And we know of some folks who's doing some devious things over the Internet and off the Internet. Trying to appear as if they are single when, when in fact they are very much married. OK, they're very much married. And it's unfortunate that the ones who kind of suspect that these individuals are married, but they continue to go out with them. It's unfortunate that they do that because now you're under a curse, too, when you do that. Now you wondering why you sick. Now you wonder why you can't get ahead. Now you wondering why that man ain't paying attention to you or why that man don't have any time for you. And you didn't allow your feelings to be wrapped up in a man that's emotionally as well as physically unavailable to you. And then you got some folks that's passing diseases all around. OK. I'm telling you, there's a lot of mess that goes on. And when God is showing you time and time again what is taking place with these individuals, of course, we pray. And then we also warn our friends and relatives and so forth who are mixed up in some things. And even if they say that that's not your business and you need to stay out of it, it doesn't matter because the seed has been sown and they are responsible for the truth that they have been given to them. That's why some will quick, quickly shut down you up real quick because they don't want to hear the truth but that's okay because the truth can come through a telegram the truth can come through a letter the truth can come through an audio message the truth can come in all sorts of ways but we do this because we care we care a whole lot and we don't want to see people being ensnared with the yoke of bondage especially if they just come up out of bondage you just left that man you just left that woman why is it that you are trying to get yourself yoked up again with somebody. Give yourself a break, some of us say. Give yourself a break. Why is it that you got to be with this man and that man? And then you got to date this one. Then you're talking to this one through the phone, texting and so forth. Then you got to meet with this one. Well, he's just my friend, but he's your married friend. And you know that he sees you for more than just a friendship. Come on. And you got some women that are mixed up in these complicated lifestyles. And then they wonder why God is not there or why God is not blessing them. Or why is it that you always get blessed, but I don't? Because look at the choices that you make, sister. Why are you hating? <laughs> As a street says. You know, but they have access to truth just like you got access to truth, right? And they also have access. And exit right out that door if they want it. And if they can, if they choose to continue to stay up 
in this dysfunctional atmosphere dealing with some kind of weirdo or weirdos because some people got multiple partners then that's what they choose to do one thing about it i love god because he ain't making you do too much of anything all he does is show you the light and want and he wants you to walk toward the light and you have that option of whether or not you want to stay in your darkness you see and that's just what some people do they stay in their darkness because they don't want to see the light. They don't want to experience true freedom. It's more comfortable being in this situation. You don't know what my plight is, sister. I've been going through for a long time. And you know, if I do this or if I do that, that's fine. You can bring a whole long list of why you can't do something. And I can bring a whole long list of why you can do something. Okay? This is the reality that many people face, especially when it comes to relationship breakup. But then, as the warning signs are there, as I said earlier, they have this thing of wanting to go down this path with someone else, treat that other one better, do everything right by that other one, fantasizing their head about what they could do for this one. When meanwhile, God is like, why can't you take care of the bride of your youth? Why can't you take care of that husband of your youth? Why can't you work things out with this person? Why do you think that starting all over again with someone else is going to be the best thing? When maybe you need to be starting all over again with me. And that's why the dates aren't working. And I will tell you, I got to, I got to see this close hand, uh, firsthand, close up, okay, um, an individual. This particular person was repeatedly told to spend some time by herself you don't need to be mixed up with this man you don't need to be mixed up with that man you just broke up with somebody not that long ago and the more she ignored what I was saying the worse situations were for her it's until you get to that place where you say you know what God must be after me God loves me he he wants me to do what's right and then finally you go ahead and you do what's right and sometimes for some people, their relationships are not that bad for them to be going off anywhere. And when I say not that bad, I'm talking about nobody's getting punched, kicked, shoved. There's no emotional abuse going on. There's nobody, um, you know, calling folks names on a regular basis. There's nobody sitting up there partying and there's no alcoholics and no drug use going on. There's no crazy making. There's none of it. But some folks will exaggerate some things and they'll nitpick and they'll find fault because they want to experience something fresh. They want something new. And that's a personality disorder for many people. Being bored all the time. Ooh, ooh, that's a character trait of one who might be going through any number of different personality disorders. Instead of running after another one, some folks need to run to a therapist. Okay. We see the writing on the wall. Those of us who have taken psych, uh, psychology, those of us who have read all sorts of information dealing with different personality disorders, others who grew up around some dysfunction, we can see that boredom, boredom is one of the character traits of some of these personality disorders. They can't sit still. They can't stay focused without being fidgety. Okay. They get bored with conversation. They get bored with sex. They get bored with opportunities. They get bored with their own families. They're just bored. And then they're boring. On top of that, I have a blog that's devoted to people who have uh, the mindset where they're bored easily. Things to do bored.blogspot.com. Check it out. Because I'm one of those that I get bored on the internet. And then I start looking around, you know, and I'm doing something else. And, you know, there that's just something about me. And when I was a child, I used to tell my mother, I'm bored. Okay. And so I would go off creating something, building something. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, trying to start a club with some, you know, kids at school because I'm bored. I didn't want to just go to school. I wanted to have something else. Okay. And then extracurricular activities. I had a whole lot of them, okay, from ninth to 12th grade because I was bored. I didn't like routine. And nowadays, I still have that about me, but it's under control, okay? But there are those people who they don't recognize that about themselves. And next thing you know, they're divorcing when they really don't need to divorce. You just need to get that boredom under control. 
change up your routine a little bit, you know, step out and do some things that are fun, that are interesting, that are not going to cost you your anointing. That's not going to put you in a backslidden state of mind with the Lord, spiritually, physically, mentally, you name it. Relationship breakup can be prevented if one is willing to work while the other one is willing to watch and then eventually work. You see, because sometimes you've got to be the one to show someone how much you love and appreciate and care for them in order for them to see that you've changed and that you are genuine and that you are willing to really do what it takes. But as long as there's a part of you that says, well, I'm going to do this for a time, but the minute she makes me mad, uh, <laughs> all bets are off. Well, then go back down that uh, down that path of relationship breakup because it's coming. And this time for some people, she ain't coming back this time for some people. He ain't coming back. Remember, experts have said that a person will break up with someone at least seven times, especially in an abusive relationship, um, and then come right back. But if so-and-so is on a uh, breakup number eight, there's a possibility she's not coming back or he's not coming back. Or for some people, they don't even allow it to get uh, that high in numbers. They're simply like, listen, you, you messed me over one time and I find out about it. It's a wrap. It's over. And some folks are scrambling, trying to cover up everything because they know. And for some people, they it's like baseball for them. Three strikes and you're out. I don't know who I'm talking to, but three strikes and you're out. That's what she said. And if you really love her like you claim, every single day you should be doing something to prove your love. And to prove that you are trustworthy and that you've made up in your mind that you're going to do what's right. But the same old, same old don't work. I'm a witness. It doesn't work. You can try it this way and you can try it that way. And then those are the only two ways. And then you think it's supposed to keep a, re a relationship going. Mm -mm. Some people you need about five, six, seven, eight, ten, fifteen 10, 15 different ways because it's their personality. And their personality isn't going to allow for so much to be done to them, to hurt them. So we bow our heads in prayer right now in Jesus mighty name that the Lord will just give you the guidance as you are headed toward breakup. If it is his will, then let it be. If it is not, then you will work as much as you possibly can on your relationship, being focused on the one that you have committed to and not on everyone else and what everyone else is doing. I pray in Jesus mighty name. That for those who have already broken up, that they will continue to be at peace, knowing that God is with them every step of the way, that they will seek him and find out what it is that they need to do in order to make their lives more livable, more enjoyable and all of the rest. I pray in Jesus name that no weapon formed against anyone who is in a breakup season will prosper and that the Lord will get the glory when it's all said and done. I pray that the necessary resources will be provided for those who are breaking up. And I pray that those who are in emotionally as well as physically abu abusive relationships will seek the resources. will seek the resources that will get them up out of their terrible situations. I pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Blessings to you. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. Laboring to Love an Abusive Mate was uh, the book that I wrote years ago, back when I was a mere uh, 21. Uh, it hadn't been printed because I was in the abusive relationship at the time. It wasn't until many years later that I printed the book. I was with an older man at that particular time, and he was very controlling. He was mean-spirited, and I thought that I could change him, right? At 21, <laughs> you could barely do some things on your own, much less try to change someone. But anyway, the poetry in that book uh, is very bold. Um, it is emotional and it just shows you the kind of mindset a person has when they're uh, in that breakup to make up merry-go-round. So for those of you all who want to take a glimpse of, at that, by all means, for others who are looking to be free out of this circle of toxic men, go over uh, to my link to get socially sweet, privately cruel, abusive men. 
um, that is available online so you can be able to download it to your portable device and read it privately rather than order the printed book and then of course there is she's crazy for some of you men who you are just tired of the craziness right with some folks but at the same time you also have to look at whether or not you're contributing to some of that craziness and I will tell you I came across an individual who was quite bold and he said yes he says that more times than none it is a man doing something in a relationship that he has no business doing and it drives that woman crazy and I'm telling you that is so true there are also though those women though right and as women become more and more like men well there's going to be those dramas too of being the player okay and trying to you know do this that and the other um that ends up causing a man to want to go a little crazy too so anyway please do check out she's crazy for you men who are um, being abused whether mentally or physically by uh, a partner well, that is it. I thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Uh, we do welcome donations. Feel free to subscribe to YouTube NM Enterprise 7.